name's Barry Croft and I'm the program leader for biosecurity with BSES and I'm based at Woodford. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, return stunting disease or as everybody in the in industry um, knows the name, RSD. So with return stunting disease, the primary mechanism of controlling the disease is to um, make sure that you plant disease free planting material. And the way that we do this is that the productivity services operate approved seed schemes in most of the regions and a newer approach that we're um, encouraging growers to examine is to use tissue culture plants. Both these sources are disease free seed cane that growers can obtain and plant onto their farm and that's the most important first step in controlling return stunting disease. The second most important step is to ensure that you keep that disease-free planting material um, disease-free and the way to do that is by um, disinfecting any planting machinery, planters, harvesters, anything that cuts the cane that might spread the disease back into the healthy cane that you've bought from the approved seed plot. Once you get the cane back onto your farm it's extremely important that you plant that cane into a fallow block. It's no good to plant the cane into a field that's been plow out replant because you'll get volunteers that might carry the disease over from the previous crop into your new approved seed. We also recommend that growers obtain their approved seed every year and that they only plant first or second progeny from that approved seed. In some cases this is not possible so growers can ask the productivity service in their region to come out and inspect the cane and they will take samples and then send it away to the laboratory to see whether it is free of return stunning disease. Yeah, Bruce Quinn from uh, Isis Productivity Limited. Uh, I've been asked to talk about uh, RSD or return stunning disease. Um, RSD can cause up to 60% loss in, in, in the cane crop. Uh, in the Isis area in the early 2000s, uh, we had half of our area infected by RSD. Uh, the way we have managed uh, this is um, with clean seed, um, hot water treatment and surveying all our plots and surveying clean seed on, on the growers' farms. Half of our um, planting in, in, the, in the early 2000s was plout replant um, and we've got that down to a very small proportion of, of plout replant now in, in the area. Um, we believe or, that we're down to about a 1% um, area infected with RSD and I'd like to see it get down a bit lower than that, um, but that's about where we are today. The way that we look for the disease in stalks is to slice open the cane and you can see a reddening in the nodal region and that's where the bacteria has blocked the cells that are carrying the water up to the leaves. RSD can cause yield losses of 20 to 30%. But if the cane is suffering from moisture stress, those losses can increase quite markedly and can be anywhere from 40 to 60%. So this is a very important disease. One of the most difficult things about return stunning disease is it has no external symptoms. So the cane can be infected with the disease and farmers just don't know. The way that we have to identify whether the cane is infected with um, return stunning disease is to take a sample and send it away to the BSCS ELISA laboratory and there it will be tested for the particular and see whether it has RSD. The way that we take samples for testing is to blow out the water from the cells that are carrying the water up to the leaves and we look in inside that extract and see whether the bacteria are present. I'll just demonstrate now how we actually do take the samples. We use an, um, an air compressor and we actually blow air through the, the stalk piece and you get a very small extract and that's where the bacteria are present in the plant. 